This is the orientation for the second round of the skilled events. And I'll list the skilled events on the next page. These are the events that um, we'll talk about in this particular orientation. Biomedical lab science, dental science, nursing assisting, personal care, physical therapy, sports medicine, veterinary science, and emergency medical technician. Now, the only one that is a little bit different is personal care, but we'll talk about that as we get to it. Now, you are doing round two. If you're listening to this orientation, you are round two. Round one was their test for all of the events listed with the exception of personal care. Personal care is a special needs event. It is a skilled event, but it is a single round. So every competitor that comes to conference in personal care will be um, skilled. The top six have moved on to your round and they were posted on the Alabama HOSA website in random order. So if the students ask you about the order, the order is always random. They don't know first through sixth until we get to the stage and award ceremony. Uh, you do need to remind the competitors that their test portion is added to their skilled score to determine their final placement. So that test still matters. Now, some of this was discussed in the binder video, but just a refresher, the event managers will come to headquarters at the orientation time and pick up your binder, pick up your equipment and supplies, ask any event specific questions that you have, and you'll get to go right on back to your room. So you're not waiting 30 or 40 minutes before you get to get to your room and, and get started. The event personnel go straight to the event room. Um, go ahead and start getting your, your room ready, begin orienting your judges as they arrive. Uh, make sure they understand the skill portion that they are familiar with the rubrics and what they're going to be asked to score. Each of these events should have judges, so there should be Scantron forms in the binder for these judges. Um, if you need a patient for your event, you will be notified ahead of time that you need a patient and you'll ask one of your students to be the patient. The best ways that you can prepare for your event before you get to SLC is print and review those event guidelines. Read them several times. We will try our best to go exactly by those guidelines. Um, review the skills that are gonna be required. You will not know which skill and scenario is going to be in your event until you pick up your, your event supplies in orientation. So be familiar with all the possible skills in your event. If it is an event that you are not familiar with the skills, do a little research. Do a little internet research, watch some how-to YouTube videos, contact some professionals that work in that career field, but be familiar with those skills because you may also have to help the judges and answer their questions on the skills. We are making every attempt to have judges that are familiar with the um, health profession that these skills are, are a part of, but I can't guarantee that. So you may have to review the skill and the rubric with them before you start with the competitors. Contact the other members of your team and make sure that everybody's comfortable with the event and everybody knows what their part's going to be. Once you're at SLC and before the students come for their orientation, um, check your room diagram. It should look like the picture on the side. That is, that is how we set up for all of the skilled events. Of course, the equipment will be different as needed but check the diagram, make sure the room is how you need it to be. If you need to move furniture a little bit, move it, just put it back before you leave. Review the required skills again. Look over the scenario, the scripts and the equipment. Make sure you don't have any questions about any of those. Determine when you're gonna set up your equipment. Your competitors do not need to see the equipment in orientation. They don't need to see any of the equipment until they are coming in to get their scenario and begin their skill. If all of them see it at one time, then you've got five competitors that are walking out that are going to be able to figure out what the skill is and study an additional time for that skill. And our goal is fair and consistent. 
and that would not be fair for them to have additional time more than the first couple of competitors. So either cover the equipment, don't put the equipment out until you've oriented the students, or orient the students outside of the room or in the holding area, however you want to do it that you feel like will work best for you. Again, make sure you review the skills, the scenario, and the rubrics with the judges. Make sure they are very comfortable with what they're being asked to score before the competitors come in. Also, make sure they know how much time they're going to have to score because it's less time than what they think. Normally, we give the judges between one and three minutes to complete their scoring between competitors. Remind them not to make extra marks on the Scantron and to make sure they bubble in completely. You can absolutely give them something to put underneath their Scantron so that their pencil doesn't puncture through. Remind them that once all the competitors have scored, they will have one last opportunity to come together, talk about it, and make changes on their Scantrons as they see fit. If you are in a team event and it's a, it's a, a situation where the two team members are scored separately because they're doing two different things, one judge will score one team member and the other judge will score the other team member. If you have a third judge, they can attempt to score them both, or they can pick to also judge the team member that might have the most complicated portion to do. That is up to you, but that is the easiest way to make sure that they are not overwhelmed by trying to watch two competitors at the same time. One judge scores one, one judge scores the other. Also, make sure you review the script and scenario with your patient. If you have an event that requires a patient, please go over the scenario with them and the script and what they're expected to say. Are they expected to be cooperative? If the script does not say be uncooperative or non-responsive, then they should cooperate with the competitors. Once they make up an answer for a competitor, they need to use that same answer anytime that question is asked again. They are not to volunteer information unless the script provides that information for them and says, tell them upon arrival. Otherwise, they need to wait until they're asked and then respond according to the script. If the script doesn't give them an answer, they're to make up one, but then they are to keep that answer consistent through all the competitors. As long as we make sure that all the answers are the same, then our competitors are having to respond to the same situation and it is a fair and consistent event. Okay, now you're ready for the competitors. When they come to their orientation, you're gonna use the roster to check them in again, just like we did in round one. Um, it is easiest to use that table on the outside of the door. That way they are outside and as they are going into the room, it's very easily easy to individually look at each one and speak to each one. You only have six competitors or six teams for, this, for these events, so it makes it a lot easier. Uh, just keep in mind for the guidelines, you do not need to check the guidelines on any of these events except personal care because it is a single round event. So this is the only time they would have to show you their guidelines. If one of the events requires STEM Premier, a STEM Premier upload, a list of all the competitors or teams that uploaded will be in your binder. Check dress code as they're coming in and you'll need to look at your guidelines to see what appropriate dress code is for this event. Um, scrubs are not appropriate dress code for everything. And keep in mind, most of them do allow the black or navy suit or the HOSA uniform for uh, the event or clothes appropriate to the career. Uh, for EMTs, I just don't see them wearing scrubs. They're going into an environment where scrubs are not necessarily the safest items for them to wear and they need a lot more pockets. So if you're in doubt, talk to people in that profession to make sure that you know what these students should come in there wearing. 
orient the competitors now once they're in or once you have um, checked them all in and you've got them where you want them to be for orientation. Make sure they know how the event's gonna flow. Tell them what order they're going to compete in. And guys, it's okay not to do this in alphabetical order because everybody does things in alphabetical order and then your same kids are going first all the time. It's okay to make this random or go reverse alphabetical order or however you want to do it, but just make sure they know what order they're going to compete in. Tell them where they're going to be waiting and your teacher assignment sheet tells you where the holding areas and waiting areas are going to be. Pick the one that's closest to you and make sure they know where it is and that this is where they are to stay until it's their turn. And then once they have their turn, they are not to go back into that holding or waiting area. This is our way to try to keep them from sharing that skill with anybody else. Remind them that that skill and that scenario is confidential until after award session. They are not to return to the holding area after they compete. They are not to get on their phone and send this information out to anybody. They will receive their scenario, and as soon as they receive their scenario, time starts. Now here you have the choice of reading the scenario to each competitor or handing it to them and letting them read it for themselves. You can also read the scenario and then hand it to them. But as soon as you start reading, or as soon as you hand it to them, time starts. Now, a lot of times I would always read it to them because that assured me that that took the same amount of time for each competitor. Where allowing them to read it themselves, time could vary on that. But it is within the guidelines for you to do either one of those with everything except personal care. For personal care, you have to read the guidelines. Keep in mind that one is a special needs event. Remind your competitor that when time is called, scoring stops. So wherever they are in their skill, it, it's over, it stops. Remind them that equipment, sinks, storage areas, etc., can be simulated. And when they come in, before you start reading their scenario, if you want to remind them that there could be simulated items in the room, or if you want to orient them to where their sink and their storage area and whatever is, fine. You are certainly welcome to do that. Just do it with every single competitor the same way. It is important that you have somebody assigned as the timekeeper. They need to be keeping time starting with the scenario through to the amount of time they have for the skill. And then they also need to keep time on the judges scoring the rubrics. We need to keep it moving at a nice steady flow. You also, if you can, if you have enough personnel, assign somebody to sit at that table outside the door. This keeps any competitors from coming and listening outside the door, and it allows you to be out there to keep the noise down and to keep other students out of the hallway. If you would like, you can exchange phone numbers with the personnel in the holding rooms. That way you can text them and say, um, EMT is ready for competitor number three, and they can just send them down there to you. Um, or they can text you and, and say there's a competitor down there with a problem. But either way, you can talk to each other without having to walk down there, but that is entirely optional and up to you. Once all the competitors are done and the judges have had time to talk about it and review their scores, Collect the Scantrons from the judges and put them in the front pocket of your binder. Give them the evaluation sheets and remind them that this is an evaluation for this particular event. Not all of State Leadership Conference, but this particular event. What went well? What can we do better? And then um, remind them, if they would, to take the time on the back of their evaluation to write down general suggestions for what our competitors can do to improve. If they saw competitors consistently missing a step, let us know. We cannot give specific feedback, but I can provide general um, instructions for improvement. And then very sincerely thank them for spending their time with us and for volunteering to come help our students. Um, give them their thank you card and their judge gift 
If they need a parking sticker, we have some in headquarters. Either they can come to headquarters and get it, or you can send somebody to come get one either way. We just want to make sure that they know that we sincerely appreciate their help. We would love for them to come back next year and do it again. Now it's time for your team to review and think about the event. Um, use the checklist in the front pocket of the binder to make sure that you have everything completed. Collect up all of the uh, equipment that was sent to you. Any of the signs that were used, like storage area, biohazard trash, or any of those signs, pull them back up, put them back in the binder. We are not talking about the signs on the outside of the door that are the Renaissance signs just any signs that you used as part of your competitive event. Um, put the appropriate forms that are asked for in the front pocket of the binder and then sit down with the team and complete the event evaluation on that check sheet. From your standpoint, how did the event go? What was a challenge for you? What flowed really well? We really do look at these every year when we start planning this event again. We are trying to make the event better every year. Double check that all the equipment's picked back up, including any power cords, and then return the binder and the supplies to headquarters. Thank you so very much for taking the time to listen to this and for preparing and doing your best for our students. Thank you so much.